is KHQ Local News 11 at 11. Noon tonight, one person is still missing and several others injured after two separate avalanches on Snoqualmie Pass this evening. And right now, crews are doing everything they can to try to figure out where that person is. Good evening, I'm Katie Steiner, filling in tonight for Kelsey Watch tonight on KHQ Local News 11 at 11. Crews have been out searching for hours and now darkness sets in and the snow keeps falling. Every minute counts in recovering that snowshoer. The King County Sheriff's Office says one avalanche at Granite Mountain carried three snowshoers about 1,000 feet. Two people emerged, but their friend is still missing right now. And at another site near milepost 50, a group of 12 people were separated by a different avalanche. There, a woman with a dog was found after her dog led rescuers to her and she's expected to be okay. They haven't given us a time frame, but they found her under about two meters of snow and she was conscious and breathing and alert and alive. Now, people who know the trail said that it's very steep and very dangerous in snowy conditions. Interstate 90 was shut down tonight, but not because of avalanches, because of too many crashes and poor conditions. Now, it certainly has been cold evening for all the rescuers and overnight it looks like it's just going to get colder here around Spokane as we start to see temperatures drop into the 20s. I know it's bad. Things don't look much better for tomorrow morning either. Let's cross over to meteorologist Dave Law in the Weather Center with a closer look at what we can expect tomorrow. Dave, how does it look? Back to you, Katie. All right, thanks so much, Dave. An update now on a fire in Orfino that killed five people this morning. Fire officials say an extension cord hooked up to an electric grill shorted out and fully engulfed the house in flames. Now the fire chief says smoke inhalation is likely what killed two adults and three teenagers whose bodies were also badly burned in that fire. A family of four was inside and a teenage friend was sleeping over to celebrate a birthday. Autopsies are being planned for Monday, but investigators say there's no sign of foul play. Townspeople are shocked at the loss and have already put teddy bears and flowers at the home. A scam alert this evening involving spring weather con artists. We're told about a new person in our area going door to door offering roofing services. Now, like vultures, these fly by night roofing companies descend on neighborhoods hit by storm damage. It works where a person appears on your doorstep and says he or she is working on the neighborhood and they will give you a free estimate to repair your roof. They then say your roof needs significant work because of rain damage and then they offer to repair it for a high price. They're trying to do uh, home improvement type scams, whether it's repairing a roof, uh, refinishing a driveway, uh, pest control uh, type uh, activity. Those are things that they tend to, to focus on with the elderly. Most scam operators try to convince you to do the job right away so you don't have to ha have time to get other estimates or check out the company. Now the best thing that you can do is be careful and don't agree to anything unless that company is reputable. Well, it may not feel like spring, but it's football season and that doesn't stop some teams. But let's check in with Sam Adams in the Carhartt Sports Studio to see where we're working on for sports. Sam. That's coming up later in sports. Katie, back to you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Sam. New developments in the debate over guns as NBC discovers that another Republican senator plans to vote for greater background checks. Country from Atlanta to Indiana to California, people rallied today demanding tougher gun laws, but some gun right activists protested against those new laws. For the first time ever, the president turned over his weekly address to a private citizen, Francine Wheeler. She's one of the parents that lost her little boy in the Newtown shooting. David and I have two sons. Our younger son, Ben, age six, was murdered in his first grade classroom on December 14th, exactly four months ago this weekend. Wheeler was among the Newtown families who spent the week on Capitol Hill pressing Congress to act, and conversations helped persuade the Senate to allow debate on the new gun legislation, which would expand background checks due to two Republicans swaying the balance. Still, a number of Republicans voted against moving that bill forward, and for now, the debate on guns will continue, and it's likely going to go on for months. New out of North Idaho tonight, Governor Butch Otter has vetoed a bill that would give money to the state to manage wolves. The bill would move $100,000 from hunter access to a program that kills wolves who prey on livestock and prized game like elk and deer. Governor Otto vetoed the bill, saying it would create a rift between sportsmen and livestock producers and says stakeholders weren't consulted. 
The tax deadline is on Monday, so for many of you, the next two days is going to be all about trying to get your taxes done as soon as possible. But if you are afraid you won't make it, the best thing for you to do is to file for an extension. Now, getting an extension is actually pretty easy and it's free. All you have to do is fill out a form with the IRS, just one form, and you have until October 15th to get your returns filed. Now, there's no fee for doing this, and if you file late, you pay 5% of the tax you owe, up to 25%. Today, we talked to Bob Sanders, and he's the managing shareholder of one of Spokane's oldest CPA firms. And he says if you haven't begun to file yet, it could be too late to get it done by a professional. At this point, uh, I'm, I'm sure you're not going to get it done if you haven't started, uh, you know, unless you're planning on doing it online yourself. Uh, if you're having a professional do it, it's, I would say it's probably too late. The best you're going to get is an extension. Um, and even that, just as soon as possible. However, if you don't get everything done and you don't get an extension in the next two days, you'll still have to pay late fees up to 0.5% for each month. And you're also going to have to wait longer for that refund. Now that tax season is almost over, I bet you have a lot of sensitive documents. I know I have a folder that keeps on growing in my house. And our best bet to get rid of our documents is our KHQ Shred Day. And it's coming up this Wednesday, April 17th. Our KHQ crews will be teaming up with Secure Shred and American West Bank to help you get rid of sensitive documents. Documents that could put you at risk of identity theft. And as I mentioned, this is also a good opportunity for people to get rid of old financial and tax documents since that tax deadline is April 15th on Monday. This year we'll be at American West Bank at the intersection of Sprague and Sullivan. Now that is the only location this year and we're going to be starting at 6 o'clock in the morning and we're going to be going till 6.30 p.m. So we've got a good 12 and a half hour shift for you there. And of course, we hope to see you out there. Now, new, a disabled puppy paid a visit to a boy who's helping fund his corrective surgery. Kramer the Dachshund stopped by a Washington State first grade class. The five-month-old has dwarfism and this was, was born with a deformity in both front paws and his knuckles. And Jacob read about Kramer on Facebook and he decided to start raising money for the puppy's operation. So far, he's collected over $100, get this, in pennies. This was all at his school. Jacob said he's very proud of his fundraising efforts and the rescue group is very thankful as well. Because I've raised all this money just for surgery for Kramer by people, just pure people, yeah. my classmates. Um, the kids were just so well behaved and just so appreciative and we are so appreciative of, of the children too. They're learning diversity with animals mm -hmm. and with human beings and that's what we want. What a sweetie. That rescue group is waiting for Kramer to grow and mature before he undergoes surgery. Stay with us. We have a lot more up to come at KHQ Local News 11 at 11, including a closer look at sports with Sam Adams in the Carhartt Sports Studio and why you might want to break out that winter gear you just packed away. More cold and unfortunately snowy temperatures in your six day. That's coming up straight after the break with Dave Law. When a first grader offered to share some of his Nutella with friends, they took him up on it. Obviously, it's chocolate, but they didn't realize that the chocolatey treat was made of nuts that could cause one boy some very serious problems. Six-year-old Sully Moore has a serious nut allergy and didn't realize the chocolate treat was made with hazelnuts. That's when seven-year-old Ransom Duel sprung into action and told his buddy to stop eating and ran to a teacher for help right away. Because of Ransom's quick thinking, Sully only ended up with some hives, but his mom said it could have ended to a trip in the emergency room. Um, Sully just thought it was chocolate. He took some and uh, his friend Ransom happens to be an excellent reader and also realized something was amiss. And then I looked on the, the list of ingredients and about right in the middle I found tree nuts. Wow. That is so cool. Ransom was recognized for being a hero in front of his entire school. He also got a certificate and a specially made patch that says Ransom, a good friend. And the school took the opportunity to remind kids about the rules. What a cute story. Stay with us. Your business headlines are coming up next. In consumer news this morning, Apple has now tweaked its app store, highlighting recommended age ratings. Customers will soon see a small informational box directly below the developer's credits with a recommended age and content comments. AppleInsider.com reports that the change appears to be part of a bigger push to offer more transparency in the Apple Store. 
A choking hazard prompts the recall of more than 200,000 infant outfits. It turns out the zipper can come off. The recall covers eight styles of Carter's one-piece footed cotton clothing sold under the brands Baby Bagosh, Child of Mine, and Just One You. The zipper runs, runs from the foot to the neck and sizes range from newborn to nine months. Now these were sold in December and January and if you think you have one of these products or are worried about it, make sure you log on to carters.com and click on product recalls for more information. Welcome back. It's going to be a frosty start tomorrow morning. I don't want to talk about oh. it, okay? I just want to snuggle in my bed and not worry about how cold it's going to be oh. tomorrow. <laughs> but open the drapes, let the sun in, you know, we heat up into the upper 40s, 50s. Yeah. As long as it's sunny. Yeah, right? but after afternoon showers, you know, it's very similar to what we saw today, but look at the temperature trend. Oh, it's going Yay. up and up oh, and up. At least, oh. at least we get a little bit better, right? 40s, 50s, it gets better. 60. <laughs> awesome. You guys have a great night. We'll see you tomorrow. Nice job.